Do you want to know how the new crafting system works? And more importantly, do you want to know how to get a cool rainbow pickaxe? Because that's really the important question, isn't it? Well, if the answer to those questions is yes, then you are absolutely in the right place because we're going to be breaking down everything crafting related so that you know exactly where to start. Speaking of starting, let's use the tool that we all start with, the pickaxe. First up, we have a scrap pickaxe. Now this is very, very cheap to make. All it requires is three vault scrap and two driftwood. Vault scrap is pretty much the same as it was in Vault Hunters 1.16. You can smelt down your existing gear into vault scrap. However, there is a machine that makes this even better. And that is this vault recycler. So this is going to make you much more efficient at smelting down all of your scrap. So let's take this vault chest plate that we've got, stick it in the vault recycler, and instead of getting one, we're actually going to get four vault scrap. Now be aware, same as with everything in this guide, it is very early days those numbers can change. But the whole point of the vault recycler is you're going to get more scrap back, and then you're going to be able to make more items. So, win-win really. So just grab your vault scrap, grab your couple of driftwood that you will get from chests in the vault, and make yourself a scrap pickaxe. You're going to be able to get this really early game, and it is honestly a really early game pickaxe. That's pretty much what it is. And we'll get into a little bit later on exactly why that is. But let me show you off the other pickaxes first. So we have the vault pickaxe. This is the next tier up. And that one requires vault ingots and driftwood. Nothing particularly special there. However, the one after that is this black chromatic pickaxe. Now the black chromatic pickaxe requires three black chromatic steel. Now these are made using chromatic steel ingots, which are made using chromatic chromatic iron and carbon. Chromatic iron is a new ore found in the overworld and you can also find a bunch of this in chests inside the vault, but the carbon can only be found in the vault. So make sure that you're gathering that as much as you possibly can. You can see as we're increasing in cost, the durability, which is the first number on there, is increasing as well as the repair slots. So you're going to be able to invest a lot more in the pickaxe, knowing it's going to last you a lot longer. Next up is the echoing pickaxe. Now this uses the new echoing ingots and again the same with the driftwood you'll get the pattern that's going on here and that requires eight echo gems and a netherite ingot. Now if you're in the early game that's going to sound pretty expensive and it actually is quite expensive but that is nothing compared to the rainbow pickaxe. The rainbow pickaxe costs you three omega pogs. And these are pretty much the same as what they've always been, where they are just ridiculously expensive to make. So those pickaxes are very expensive. But what do you get in return? Because you could just use a netherite pickaxe. That wouldn't be too much of an issue, right? Well, let me show you this beautiful machine. It is called a tool vice. I'm not quite sure why they spell it with an S, but I'm sure some of you will let me know in the comments why it's with an S and not a C. But what this does is it allows you to upgrade your vault pickaxes. Now, when you put the pickaxe into the vice, you're going to be able to upgrade it in four different ways. First off, fairly simple, you can upgrade the durability. You could also increase the reach and allowing you to mine things further away, the mining speed which is essentially adding more haste to it, and then copiously which increases the amount of gems that you will get from different ores. Now the cheapest one is the durability only requiring plating and bronze, but as you go down they get more expensive until you need all six of these ingredients in order to increase basically the fortune level of it. Now here's where things get a little bit strange and a little bit different from what you're probably used to. Because when you upgrade your pickaxe, it's going to change this bar. So the first upgrade is always guaranteed to work and that will give you 231 durability for example. But now this number has changed to 90%, which means that there's a 90% chance that your next upgrade will succeed. And if it doesn't succeed, it breaks. That's right, your pickaxe breaks. So you could spend three Omega Pogs on a pickaxe and then it just breaks when you try and upgrade it. It really is testing how greedy you're going to be with your upgrades. Now with the scrappy one being the cheapest, it does decrease this number the fastest. So we can just keep doing this, going all the way and there we go, we lost it. Thankfully though, we brought a spare so we can give it another go. Now, this number decreases very quickly for a scrappy pickaxe, but if we take, say, the prismatic pickaxe, that's actually going to only decrease by 1% 
every time that we upgrade it. And as you can see on here, we're actually getting quite a few upgrades before it breaks. Now let's take the Vault Pickaxe for a spin for this one and I will show you what this lovely yellow arrow does. It allows you to add something called a socket. So if we just throw a couple of mining speeds on here, that will then move the arrow and we will have gained a socket on this pickaxe. Sockets allow you to add special things called jewels that you can craft to give your pickaxe a special ability. And if you do it properly, you can get a lot of sockets on a high level pickaxe. Whereas for a scrap pickaxe, you can pretty much only get one before it's pretty much guaranteed to break. Now there's 12 jewels that you can get, but I wouldn't recommend putting all of them on one pickaxe. You can make an absolutely ridiculous pickaxe like this one here, and it gives you a little overview of what each of the gems do. But honestly, some of them don't work very well together. For example, I've got shoveling on this pickaxe, so I'm just going to mine some of this gravel. Oh, wait, it's now glass. Why is it glass? It's because this pickaxe has got pulverizing on it, which turns the gravel into sand, and it's also got smelting, which turns the sand into glass. Now that can be useful if you want to turn an entire gravel biome into a bunch of glass, but for the most part, probably not the most useful thing. And also just be aware that the hammering, which gives you a 3x3 area to mine, the excavating, which gives you a 5x5 area, and the shattering, which gives you a 7x7 seven seven area, they don't stack. So you need to be aware of that. You don't need to put all three of those on. You can just put the shattering on to get the 7x7. Seven seven. There's no way to change it from that. Now, all you need to do to add a jewel is just take a pickaxe that has some free sockets and then add the jewel in an anvil. This one specifically gives it the axing ability. So then I can just grab that pickaxe, just run over here and then start chopping logs like it's an axe. It's actually super, super useful. Just a little warning for you though, this process is irreversible. So don't go putting a smelting jewel on your pickaxe if you're then later gonna wanna use it to dig out a load of sand because you're not gonna be able to do it and you're gonna need to craft yourself a brand new pickaxe. Now the old enchantments, Efficiency 5, Fortune, they still work. I've tested those out, they work perfectly fine. And you can stack the Fortune with the copious upgrades and it's gonna give you even more gems, a really, really useful thing. So that is basically pickaxes done. So let's move on to weapons and armor. Now this has changed a lot as well. Now armor still comes in the same tier it did before. So you've still got scrappy, common, rare, epic, and omega. But the vault armor that you craft yourself does change dramatically. And as you can see, each one of these is a different tier, which means it's more or less likely to roll into better armor. When you first interact with this item, the Vault Forge, you're going to see across the top, there are these different items which have different proficiencies. Now, as you craft more of a specific item, so if we craft a Vault Helmet now, you will see that the proficiency has gone up by 0.2%. But because we started out at 0%, this has got the lowest chance to actually roll into good gear. If, however, we look at chestplate proficiency, I have absolutely maxed that out. So if I then craft a piece of gear, you can see this is now master artisan level. So that is the highest rank you can get and you're more likely to be able to roll something good. Now, obviously, we're going to roll them and then the game's RNG is just going to prove me wrong, isn't it? Oh, it actually didn't. It actually rolled the correct way. Okay, so the first one that we did, the helmer, is a scrappy one. And the one that was Master Artisan rolled into an Omega. That actually never happens when you make a guide. Honestly, it always proves you wrong. Now, the different tiers are 0% to 40% is Novice. 40% to 70% is Expert. 70% to 95% is Artisan, and then 95 to 100 is Master Artisan. So if you think you're pretty close, you might as well craft a couple of bits more. Now, the only thing that you really need to know about this, because this is Netherite, this is Vault Gold, and this is Diamonds, which are all fairly self-explanatory, is you need to know about the Vault Alloy. Now, Vault Alloy uses what do you know, chromatic steel ingots again, and you can just combine that with volterite ingots or vault ingots, either one of those is completely fine, but you will need nine of those for each 
different item that you want to craft. It doesn't matter what it is anymore. Your helmets cost the same amount as the chest plates, but you're going to need 9 volt alloy and that is going to be a little bit expensive. So volt crafting is more sort of mid game. And again, just be aware, some of these can change between now and when you are watching this. Now, one other thing that you need to know about is that your actual level now affects what the quality of your gear is going to be because you gain access to better statistics as you get higher level in the vault so as you start out even if you roll level one omega gear that's not going to be quite as good as potentially a level 100 scrappy gear now that is pretty awesome in itself to be honest with you there's no more running artisan builds or treasure hunter builds and all of that sort of stuff like there was in 1.16 the only skill that actually affects things is this blacksmith talent now what this does is it gives you a chance of not using crafting potential now we haven't covered crafting potential yet so let's do that now the thing that complements the forge is this one here, which is the Vault Artisan Station. And what this is used for is essentially upgrading your gear that you've already made. So let's take this scrappy helmet, for example. You're going to see some different things if you press shift. So the first thing you'll see is something called implicits. Now, implicits Basically, they're static on your armor. There are certain things that you can do to re-roll um, the implicits and reforge them all, but generally think of those as a little bit more static. You'll also get prefixes and suffixes. So the prefixes at the bottom, we don't have any at the moment, and the suffixes, we've got a 30% knockback resistance. Now, when you get these different focuses, which you can get from either looting them in the vault or you can get them from smelting down different vault gear, you can then add them to this table and use them along with vault plating and vault bronze, which stack really nicely here, to change the different roles of the actual armor. So starting with the wild focus, it does what it says on the tin really, it's wild, it will basically remove all your prefixes and suffixes and then just roll them again. And there's a chance it'll be empty, there's a chance you'll get different ones. So for this one, instead of empty and 30% knockback resistance, we get... 6 mana and 10% thorns chance. That's actually quite good. Now, if you don't want to be quite that wild and you want to be a little bit sort of dialed in on there, you can use the nullifying focus, which can remove one random modifier. So we've currently got mana and thorns. Hopefully it gets rid of thorns, but it didn't. It got rid of mana, but it got rid of it. And then we can use the next one, the amplifying focus to add a new one back in. And that gave us 38% mana, that's even better. So you can see, you can just sort of tinker with it. There is a little element of randomness, but you can keep messing around with the suffixes and prefixes, but your implicits will generally stay the same unless you purposefully re-roll them. Now the faceted focus is a really interesting one because this is kind of similar to your artisan scrolls where you can basically re-roll the prefixes and suffixes, but it also guarantees something for you. So this one guarantees trap disarming. So if we do that, we got plus six health and trap disarming chance. Now, there are a lot of new modifiers like mana, trap disarming chance, all of that sort of stuff, but they are subject to change. So I'm not going to go over all of them now for you, but just have a bit of an experiment with it and you'll soon learn very quickly how all of that works. Now, you've also got the fundamental focus, which does re-roll those implicits that I spoke about. So here in our implicits, we've got six armor, which is tier two and we could have rolled six or seven within tier two. The higher your level, the higher tiers you will have access to. So as a general rule, tier three is better than tier two, tier two is better than tier one, and so on and so on. So if we re-roll this, we can now see we've got five armor, and that's just the highest roll we could have got on tier one. So if we were limited to tier one, that would be perfectly fine but we're not so that's actually really bad and would probably want to re-roll it again and this time we get nine armor which is a middle roll of tier three again 
It is very wild. There's no guarantee you're going to improve your armor. It could get a lot worse, but it's worth sort of messing around with it and seeing what happens. Now, another cool thing that you can do is you can use a resilient focus to re-roll the amount of repair slots. Now, realistically, I wouldn't want to do it on that one because there's still five, but we've only got five slots on this one. Maybe we can get more out of it. So we roll it. It's still five. Now it's three. So you can keep doing this. Hopefully we could get like a six or something, but unfortunately not. Now, why can't we roll any more? That is because we are out of vault bronze, but everything seemed to be super cheap. What's going on? That is because, as you can see, the crafting potential has been going down as we have been changing this. So it's at 265 now. If we re-roll it, it's dropped to 261. And the lower your potential drops, the more expensive it becomes to change it. You can reset this if you do have an opportunistic focus, but they are quite rare, so just be a little bit careful. You can't always rely on that. But to be fair... This is actually a really good piece of armor. So that's basically modifying your vault gear. So you can now craft it, you can modify it, and you're going to have to sink a lot of bronze into it. So make sure you are collecting those coin piles. The last thing is kind of a little bit more of an honorable mention more than anything else. And that is magnets. Because you can just craft a normal magnet inside a crafting bench. They're not too expensive. They do require a vault diamond, but you can just craft it as you normally would. And you now put it into your bobble slots in order to get it to work. And then as you throw things out, you'll actually see the mana in the bottom left hand corner dropped significantly. So magnets now require you to have mana in order to be able to use it but don't worry we have a fix for that and that fix comes from the magnet modification table now as you can see i've already got a magnet in here but let's swap that out for the magnet that we had earlier now just like the vault gear that you made before you can just keep upgrading this but there is a chance that it will just break for you. So again, there is that risk versus reward. Now it is slightly different from the pickaxe in that when it does get to that yellow arrow, it actually gives you a random modifier. It doesn't allow you to sort of socket something the same as the pickaxe does. This one here gives me treasure. So increases the item rarity while I have this on me, which is honestly an amazing ability. And I have also put 14 levels into mana efficiency. So if I stick this one into my bobble slot and then start throwing things out, you're going to see it basically uses no mana at all. My mana is actually recharging faster than it is getting used. The only problem is it doesn't pick things up from very far away and it picks things up quite slowly. So you need to be modifying your magnet to what is going to be useful for you. And of course, experiment with different magnets. They're not that expensive and see what modifiers it rolls for you. But that should get you fully started with everything that you need to know. If you did enjoy the video and found it useful, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the like button if you did enjoy the content. I'll be making an absolute ton of Vault Hunters videos going forwards. So make sure that you check out the guides. The SMP is going live again next week. So make sure you check all that out as well. I've been Hellfire Mage. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.